Hello, welcome back. Here we're conquering the topic of the introduction to the derivative in calculus. Calculus is based upon the derivative. Everything that follows comes from what we learn in this very first introductory lesson. In order to understand conceptually what a derivative is, we're going to talk about everyday life. Position of a particle, or position of a car, position of an airplane. Right, velocity of an airplane, acceleration of an airplane, position, velocity, acceleration, they're all interrelated. It turns out that these various terms that we have words for, they are what we call derivatives in calculus, right? So we have a uh, derivative. When we say the word derivative, before we get started with the drawing, I want you to replace in your mind, anytime you read the word derivative or see the word derivative, I want you to replace it with rate of change. How does something change with respect to something else? Because in everyday life, in actual science and engineering and mathematics, things are changing all the time. The air temperature is changing as a function of time. The uh, velocity of the particles in the room are changing as a function of their position in the room. So if we want to know how things change as time goes on or as a function of distance, we have to study rates of change. In calculus, the word that we use for that is called the derivative. So replace it in your mind with the phrase rate of change. That's very, very important. We're going to plot the position of some particle as a function of time. So um, this axis over here will be the time axis, and that'll be in seconds. And over here, we're going to have the position of some particle as a function of time. And the uh, unit of this is going to be in meters. So I'll put meters right down here. And let's take a look at some sort of parabolic motion like this. This is a, 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 the shape of a freehand parabola, half of a parabola anyway. And so let's say then that the position as a function of time was equal to t squared. So what this is telling me is if I have a, a graph like this, this is the distance away I am from the origin as a function of time. So at zero seconds, zero squared is zero, so I'm at a position of zero. But at one second in the future, one squared is one, I'm one meter away from the starting point. In fact, if I hold like a meter stick up here, you know, I can slide this back here and I can say this is in centimeters, right? And so basically this is plotting how far away I'm getting from the origin as a function of time. And because as time goes on, one second, two second, three second, four seconds, you can see that I start pulling away very, very rapidly or I'm covering more distance in the same amount of time. So I'm sort of accelerating. I'm kind of like speeding up as time goes on. And you can see that because when the graph starts over here, I'm not moving very far at all in distance away. But over here, the one second interval over here, I'm, I'm traveling a very far distance here. So if it helps you, you know, you can put these little tick marks, one second, two second, three second, four seconds, you know, one meter, two meter, three meter, four meter. And so in this one second interval of time, I don't move very far in meters. But in this one second interval of time, I'm moving pretty far. So as time goes on, I'm covering more distance. So that's why the shape of this thing, it, it, it looks curved. Because as time marches on, I'm, start, I'm covering um, a, a greater quantity of distance per second, is what's really this graph is telling us. All right? So um, <clears throat> we could use, right now we're doing position as a function of time, but I want you to know that as we discuss these ideas, the, these ideas apply to any graph f of x, where x could be any variable. We're going to give, I'll give examples of that as we get a little bit later in the lesson. I'm motivating it as a function of time, as time ticks on. But just so you know, it applies to a function of any variable, position, uh, 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 you know, distance, displacement, time, even a function of temperature. Lots of things are a function of temperature. As temperature changes, you know, uh, things may change and the weather and things like that. So in this case, it's a function of time. Now, what is going to happen if we want to figure out how the position of this particle changes as a function of time. What we've explicitly said is that here in the beginning, it doesn't appear that the motion is really changing all that fast. Because here's a one second interval of time and I don't change very much. But here's a one second of time where I am changing a lot more. So it appears that I'm speeding up as I go along. So what we're going to talk about is the term derivative. Derivative means rate of change. So if I want to take and show you what the derivative of the position function of any object is, then it's going to be the rate of change of the position. Now think in your mind, what do you know of that is commonly called the rate of change of position? Now you don't say it like that, but that's what we call the velocity of a particle. 
Think about the uh, units of position, it's meters, right? But then we have the, the velocity of a particle, we call it meters per second. Look at the units, meters per second. It's a comparison between how far something moves in a fixed or, or a given amount of time. So it's, it's a combination of units, uh, distance and time. So if we want to figure out the rate of change of this thing, we can t we know that it's changing very rapidly here, um, very, very, uh, very, very, um, gingerly here, not very much, and we know it's changing very, very fast over here. Now, in calculus, we talk about the rate of change all the time, and we're going to learn that the rate of change, called the derivative, is the slope of the line tangent to a curve. Right now we have learned in algebra that we have the slope of a line. Here is a medium slope of a line. Here is a very steep slope of a line. When it's horizontal, the slope of a line is zero. But if I ask you, what is the slope of this thing? Well, you're not going to know what to say because it's not straight line. So if I ask you what the uh, what is the slope of this thing like right here, what would you tell me? Well, it's curving, so you probably wouldn't know. So in calculus, what we say is the slope of the line or the rate of change of something is the slope of the line that is tangent, which just means barely touching at one point the curve. Now I have a lumpy freehand curve, so it's not perfect, but you, can, you get the idea. As if I want to know the slope of the curve here or the derivative, the rate of change, I draw a line tangent to the curve down here, and you can see that this ruler is almost exactly flat here, so the derivative, the rate of change, is very close to zero, or is exactly equal to zero down here. And as we go over here, the the slope of the line tangent gets steeper and steeper and steeper. When it's over here, the slope of the line tangent or the rate of change is much, much steeper. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is that by looking at a position curve, if you want to figure out uh, its derivative, which means its rate of change, then you have to look at each moment in time and see how steep the line that's tangent to the curve is. We're going to learn all about this in calculus, but if we want to sketch what that looks like, I'm going to give you the punchline, and I'm going to get—I'm not going to prove it to you here. We're going to prove it later, and we're going to talk about it a whole lot more later. But in this next curve down, directly down below from here, again, this is going to be the time axis in seconds. But instead of plotting the position, I'm going to plot something else called the derivative. And so it's related to the original curve, but instead of uh, so we call it p of t, but we put a prime here, a little, uh, like a little mark, a little apostrophe right there. And the way that you say this is p prime of t. And, or you would say it in words, the derivative of p of t. Uh, and remember, the word derivative means rate of change. So if I tell you find the derivative of the position function, what you mean in your mind is, or what you say, is what is the rate of change of the position function? Well, the rate of change is always, it's always changing because it's a curve function. So what we have to do is say, well, what is the slope or what is the rate of change of the curve down here, which is going to be uh, very, very low. The, the slope of the line tangent to the curve here is going to be a little bit more. The slope of the line tangent to the curve here is going to be higher, and the slope of the line tangent over here is going to be even higher. So if I'm plotting the derivative, I'm literally plotting the rate of change of the line tangent to this original curve at any given point. And since it's uh, zero here, that means the slope, which is the rate of change, P of t, is going to be zero, right? And way over here, the slope is a maximum. So I'm going to put I'm going to put a dot right here. And everywhere in the middle, it turns out that the, uh, the, the slope here, it turns out that if this actually is a parabola with that equation, then this becomes a straight line. Now, I can't draw a freehand straight line, so I apologize for that. So you just got to use your imagination and pretend that this is a straight line. Okay? Make sure you understand what this graph is telling you. We're saying that the derivative of the original function right, is the slope of the line tangent to this original curve at any point. The slope here is zero, so the derivative is zero. The slope here, the slope of the line tangent, is a little bit higher than zero, so this graph is a little higher. The slope here is a little higher, so the graph here is a little higher. The slope here is a little bit higher still, and so it's higher and higher still. Now, we're not going to prove this right now because we haven't gotten into it yet, but I'm going to tell you later that p prime of t, whenever we calculate it, if the original curve was t squared, it's going to be equal to 2 times t. Now, this is the equation of a line, remember? The equation of a line is mx plus b, right? Where b is the y-intercept, and the, uh, so if you graph this, the y-intercept is 0, so it hits down here, and the slope of this thing, of this curve, is uh, 2 here. Now, you're not supposed to know at this point how I know that it's this. I'm going to teach you how to find derivatives later. 
But for any function that you could come up with, literally any function you could write down of any variable, I will teach you how to take a derivative. But what that derivative represents is how fast is the original function changing with respect to time or whatever variable you're studying at any point in the original function. In other words, what is the rate of change? And what this derivative tells me is that the rate of change is zero of the original function here. The rate of change here is bigger than zero, but less than the maximum value. If I had a real graph, I'd re read the value off, and that would be the rate of change. It would be the medium value because it's sloping up here. And the rate of change here is higher than any of these other places. So when you look at a curve and you're asked to sketch the derivative, what you're doing is sketching the slope of the line tangent to the original curve at any point in time. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.